to the first match of the evening. This is a live game uh, spawning to the top left hand corner on Habitation Station playing as Blue Protoss. It's Piscalita who already starts with um, a pylon uh, on the low ground and close to the expansion ramp and the gateway behind it. And to the top right hand corner in Teal playing Zerk for Clan HTT, it's Suno Kazri, who just goes for the gold cheese. So it seems as if Suno rather wants to attack rather early in this game. Uh, using a lot of links, she will be able, or at least a lot of mineral you heavy units, she will be able to just mass quite quickly. So Piscalita uh, seen the gold cheese pretty quickly. So she knows what's headed away, just plants down the Sanvanetics core and her own Nexus immediately. So she also sees the first links already headed towards her base. So she will probably just start to wall off completely, I think. Will not be able to just get out this uh, Zealot in time. So I don't really know what she's waiting for. I mean, by now she should have already realized that these, uh, this, uh, the ramp is wide open. Unfortunately, Sunukazri also not watching, really wants to get through this pylon over here. Although there was a wide open gap to the left hand side of the wall, so she could have just easily get in, got inside the base with a lot of links actually killing the pro probably before it might have been able to just kill that pylon that will at least get the zealot over here just rallies across more links trying to tear down this pylon over here so finally the subnetics core is down actually researching the upgrade for air weapons i think that was just a misclick i think she really wanted to research warp gate but uh, in the hectic of all the events she unfortunately just pressed the wrong button or the wrong hot Key. In the meantime, we have Suno already preparing a baneling nest in order to baneling bust through this. Yeah, she hasn't gotten her nickname, the bee busting bitch, for nothing. And that's not a nickname I gave her. I know I have a lot of mean comments to say about some of our players, but uh, this nickname was actually not my invention. So, uh, Piscalina just manages to barely seal off everything with another gateway and another pylon over here. But uh, there's a lot of wide open space for links to just come in, a lot of surface area to attack these buildings. So, Suno just runs in with most of these links, knowing that the Mothership Corps will eventually whittle something down, but will not be able to whittle down everything. So, one more pylon needs to get thrown down. Suno also tries to get through this one, and actually, again, Piscalina not really paying attention this time around, just barely splends down. Um, the um, gateway over here but probably just didn't have enough money in order to get all the buildings down finally the links break through this pylon over here and now in the middle of the line of the natural base not too many links though so she didn't really get too much damage done actually didn't get into the main base middle line whatsoever but in the meantime has already taken a third base at home so everything is looking quite okay i feel uh, just massing a few more links over here she also has the gold minerals available so her income is actually looking quite magnificent for only 29 workers to 31 so let's see what uh, she can do now. I mean, she has the Baneling tech available. Didn't really need to Baneling bust at all since she managed to get through anyways. Didn't really deal that much damage though. So, I mean, her opponent is now on uh, two bases. Um, Piscalita is already producing a lot of Stalkers. She likes her Stalker heavy plays. Suno's Overlord just doesn't really get all the necessary information. But, I mean, there's not really much to scout. She forced her opponent to build, a, to construct a lot of buildings right in front of the uh, natural base in order to seal everything off uh, to the Ling Rush. <clears throat> but will she uh, try to Baneling bust later on? No, she doesn't. She just goes into two evolution chambers, actually wants to get up uh, as much economy as possible I feel but just produces a few more zirklings over here I think oh she actually just almost saturated her in uh, second base so never mind has actually almost three bases well her main base is actually pretty empty because she transferred most of her probes uh, most of her drones sorry towards the gold hatch uh, to, yeah, towards the gold hatchery okay and then wants to go into spire I mean if you watched 
and Lucasri's play, you should expect Spire play at some point in time. Don't really know how worthwhile it's going to be, since Pescalita always goes into a lot of Stalkers. Like we said before, she really likes her Stalker play. Of course, Stalkers alone won't really work well against a mute account that's high enough, but if Pescalita just manages to push early enough, she uh, just might have some advantage she might be able to use. But this, uh, as... Uh, until that time, uh, a few stalkers are of, court, are, of course, quite vulnerable to a lot of links, and that's what Sunga actually does here. She sees that a lot of stalkers moved out in order to tear down the Overlord, so she just sends in the links and wants to tear down these stalkers here while they are alone, but unfortunately they are a little bit too late. But yeah, I mean, if you have just have a look at the production tab, uh, Sunga just producing so many more units, and now, unfortunately, Piscalita even going into the Immortal tech, not the wisest of choices. Uh, she just doesn't have any any information about Suno Kazri's um, tech whatsoever now finally just manages to get in with the warp prism is probably gonna warp in some stalkers once more because she always warps in stalkers no not this time around this time around at zealots the last few times uh, she warped something in it was actually most of the time um, stalkers even against zerk in the meantime she also prepares a big push at the front so she probably just either wants to uh, distract her opponent using this zealot here in the main base and maybe a few more or she just uh, and then attack with the main force and maybe try to take out one of the bases here or she just attacks with the main force trying to lure away most of these units and then just deal some economic damage with the harassment behind it so now of course Suno Kazumi knows what's up the units are on creep actually one muter dies as it comes out but yeah I don't think that force will actually be able to just accomplish anything the links just taking care of most of the stalkers while um, the um, actually, the Immortal, unfortunately, just arriving a little bit to the party, gets taken out immediately. So one of the very important units are already uh, have already been killed. And uh, now the Lynx just rushing in. And Pis uh, the Suno will probably easily be able to take out that base over here. I mean, there's one Photon Cannon over here, but it just won't suffice in order to keep everything back. Uh, Piscalita just knows that she can't really move out right now, so has to give up and sacrifice her third. But that's, of course, almost as good at the death sentence anyway, since Suno is uh, taking her time and taking the chance in order to get a fourth base out already. And so her opponent is on now three bases bases soon to be four while a Piscalita would actually just have to take another base but she doesn't really have that much against the mutas anyways doesn't really invest anything into stargate play so she will have to rely on her stalkers with blink in order to deal with the mutas but in the meantime until the stalkers finally get blink Suno can just of course use the mobility of the mutas here in order to fly around the bases and just try trying to deal damage whenever she can. Okay, that's actually a bad move here by Suno there. Oh, just flying across the stalkers actually has a lucky, a little, a little bit lucky that her opponent didn't have bling yet, but there the links all run in. Piscalita realizes that the rest of her army is going to die. Gigi's out and Suno takes the first map. Welcome to the second map. It's Echo. And spawning to the bottom right hand corner in blue, playing Protoss for she's got the lane it's Piscalita and playing the teal zerk for Hoska T whatever it was I just forgot it's Suno Kazri we'll probably just have to look it up a little bit later but I think even on the web page it just says HTT and uh, whatever clan it is it doesn't have a web page so I just kind of forgot what the whole clan name was but it was something japanese i said hosk hoske t something whatever it was t maybe t team no it was not t team it was something different than team but it doesn't matter this leader just starting with the wall off at the um ramp towards the natural expansion which is always quite common if the ramp is not as big as on some other maps and while sumo this time around just goes for hatchery first Piscalita just sniffs it out immediately, sees that the gas um, was the follow-up, and now the pool is soon to follow as well. Uh, already sends her overlords across the map, one overlord to the back of the base, and also to a third base, so she will see whether her opponent is taking a third base or not, or might just use the overlord later on to fly in and see what tech Piscalita is heading towards. 
Um, while she's in the meantime taking an access, of course, that was to be expected when you see an early wall off at the natural ramp. Nothing all too uncommon. So in the meantime, we have the wild probe chase. Um, but Pescalita just saving the probe for now. Also, you know, just wants to check whether a third base is going to get taken or not. Most players just put this probe on patrol move command uh, right here where the third base usually is being taken. So she will always uh, also annoy whatever pro drone just wants to build a building over here and will also get um, a warning if the drone starts attacking the probe over there so that you will just get a double warning when the opponent just tries to take the third base. So after having uh, completed the hatchery, Suno again just starting with a lot of zirklings here. Uh, that's just quite common for Suno Kazri. She likes uh, an aggressive playstyle. She also wants to attack, attack, attack and just whittle down her opponent if possible. So seeing some early links out of her is not all too uncommon. She doesn't prepare for a baneling bust though. Uh, at least not yet. Maybe she just wants to drone up a little bit behind it. Just wants to see whether she will be able to deal some damage or not. Actually, this one zealot over here should not be able to completely wall that off, I think. There should be plenty of space in order to get through here. But, yeah, basically it's just on top of everything. Just already starts shooting at some links with the Mothership Core. As soon as the links try to get up the ramp, the Photon Overcharge is getting thrown down on this pylon and driving away the links for now. Because even if they could run by now, they she, soon because we would just lose so many links here before she would actually just magic it in. But like I said, I mean, this is not a full wall of no, no, uh, never ever. So soon actually just gets in with a few links right here and uh, now just gets a full scout. Uh, sees two more gateways, sees the robotics facility, can already assume that an immortal is being made. So actually kind of the same build by Piscalita here. At least she wants to go into some kind of similar um, composition here, unit composition. While Sunukazri has just taken a third base right behind it, will probably just switch into Mutas eventually, but has not started a lair yet. Seems as if she rather just wants to go into Mars Lane first with upgrades and then maybe just intercept her opponent's army. Uh, once Piscalita just tries to move out, she probably assumes, and we already know that Piscalita likes to go for some sort of light mid-game pressure using immortals and some stalkers most ca in most cases, plus some sentries in order to half the army units. Actually, that's always quite interesting that Piscalita seems to play some sort of old style, I'd say. Something that people would more likely see in the heart of the swarm than actually in Link and uh, Legacy of the Void. So this is actually quite interesting. But yeah, there the layer is going up. In the meantime, Sinokazui just wants to defend her three bases using mostly links with upgrades, which could actually just work out tremendously if she gets a good surround. And uh, with enough vision on the map, I think she should be able to do so. Uh, Piscalita also sending an observer across the map, wants to see what her opponent is actually doing and if she wants to go into Mutas or maybe have already done that. So that's actually a switcheroo here. We have a Dark Shrine incoming. Probably not for harassment though, because I don't see a War Prison getting produced right now. Might come in later on. I think it's mostly, ah, there it is. So it could be both. She could either use it for harassment or she could also, of course, use it for Archons or maybe both. Maybe these, uh, this... Um, is only for the reinforcement. She, like I said, I mean, she could just use it uh, in order to warp NDT somewhere and harass the mineral lines as long as Sinukazri does not have any kind of vision in her main basis. Does she even have an overseer already? Probably somewhere. We can just have a look at the units. No, she doesn't even. So yeah, DT harassment would actually work out quite well against her. And I have to say that we've seen Sonokazuri forgetting about DTs quite often, especially against Poison, where she had to give away games she'd actually won against the DT play because she just didn't have any kinds of observers with her army and thus just lost to DTs, she realized too late were in there. So in the meantime, Piscalita just trying to take a third base over here. 
fairly fairly late for a Protoss, but against this kind of timing, against this kind of a Zerg player, uh, I think that's still a wise decision. So now the Spire going up. Yeah, Sunokazuri feels totally safe with this amount of units here. She sees that nothing is really headed her way. Has she already seen the third base being taken? Not yet. Uh, yeah. uh, she actually has seen at least one Palania, so she sort of she should assume that something is going up there. Maybe uh, I think in her position, I'd rather like to see a Ling being sent there to just confirm that a third base is getting built, but she probably just assumes it anyway. And there it is! DT harassment, like I said, there's the first, there's only the Spire, no Spore Crawler whatsoever, so if Piscalita actually just, uh, yeah, also switches, uh, just um, splits up her units here, that could just be devastating damage to um, to Suno there. Uh, yeah, fortunately for Suno here, DT is not really harassing the mineral line yet, but now they are going to start doing so. Finally, the Overseer just gets out, but like I said, I mean, okay, she just picks them up, so we'll be able to just save the DTs for now, but of course we'll never be able to unload them anytime soon. In the meantime, we also have Dark Templars harassing the third base over here. The um, Lings are already there, but the slow Overseer will take some time. In the meantime, of course, Piscalita could have just easily um, dropped some DTs over here as well. I mean, even if there is detection, DTs still do a lot of damage. So that was quite successful harassment for now. Okay, DTs just getting in. Needs to focus fire down the drones and keep the warp prism close by in order to save them, but she can't. So now all the DTs are going to die and, well, I mean, 11 drones still worth the investment could have dealt uh, quite more damage but of course the most important part is that while she was harassing her opponent uh, her opponent was not able to harass her so she was able to just get up that third base quite easily in the meantime creep spread looking good for suno kazri here is almost covering half of the map on echo so Zerglings now being sent across the map. Seems as if Suno just wants to test her opportunities here and see whether she can get a good surround on all of these nice force fields there. Wow, have a look at that. How tight these force fields actually were set against each other. Nice little concave there. Unfortunately, not really letting in a few units in order to kill them off. But yeah, just shutting off all the aggression in an instant. The biggest problem once more are of course the Mutus, but this time around she has the Arcan Tech at least and also Blink is almost finished plus a few stalkers in here as well i think the lings are still a problem there so with a few more arcans uh, in the mix i'd feel a lot better for piscalita here so another harassment over here just warping in a few zealots also warping in a few dark templars well i have to say it seems as if piscalita has been watching a few of the vods i was making and seeing that I was always criticizing, I have to say, her blinks uh, or her stalker warp ins with the warp prism in order to arrest, uh, telling that zealots are usually a uh, much better investment there. So yeah, this war prism will just get shut down by the muters easily. Uh, but now, of course, Piscalita knows for certain that her opponent is going into muters. I mean, she could have, and she will probably have already assumed that for quite some time. Since uh, if your opponent just produces a lot of links and links and links and links and nothing else, you can just assume that muters are follow up. I mean, where is all the gas going? So uh, Piscalita just tries to get a quick uh, answer without. A Stargate and goes into Storm could actually work out quite nicely, but of course the Mutas will always just have to stay inside the Storm in order to really um, get the damage out. I mean, the biggest problem about the Mutas is that they are so quick and that they regenerate very quickly as well. Ooh, only one Photon Cannon back here, but it's very, very far tucked back. So yeah, it won't really help that much against the Mutas, but yeah, for now, okay, so basically they're just there right in the nick of time. <coughs> with the rest of her army does not blink forward in order to maybe take out a few but yeah that's of course now the biggest problem sooner because we can just fly around with the mutas keeping her opponent tucked back while buying herself enough time to get up to hive tech and maybe even a few more upgrades here i feel but of course uh, that's always also a risk that uh, once you start harassing with the mutas oh good uh, nice cannon placement over here three cannons actually plus a pylon that can be photon overcharged so yes yeah, because we better not attacks into this army for now i mean her mute account is just getting higher and higher producing even seven more mutas in the meantime not getting oh yeah there's the upgrade okay never mind so getting one upgrade for the mutas as well so in the meantime we have a warp in over here it seems as if piscally just wants to attack the third base once more using some zealots but of course needs to do so 
and now even marches out. Yeah, and like I said, the biggest, or I wanted to say actually, the biggest problem, even getting a muter there with the Blink Stalkers right now, is the biggest problem is that once a Protoss player realizes that you actually try to invest very much into muters, they sometimes might just make a go and try to force you into a direct engagement. Because if you really have a good army composition ready, um, yeah, Mutas alone just won't do the trick. I mean, Muta Ling is very good at harassing, very good at keeping your opponent back and keeping him busy, or keeping her busy in that kind. So nice little um, force feeds over there, even storms going down, not getting all of the banelings here. So the Mutas just flying over the units, but there's still a lot of bling stalkers there. Plus the new Archons getting more here. And like I said before, at one point in time, the problem is that your Ling and uh, that your Ling, uh, your Ling Muta Force is very mobile and you can just harass the hell out of your opponent. But if your opponent actually de decides to just walk out with the whole army and go fucking kill you, then sometimes there's just not much there in order to deal with all the army. Nice force field uses once more just all oh, the Arkan eating up all of the Bailings and the rest of the army almost untouched just moves forward once more. Sunokazri drops below 100 supply. The Greater Spire is only halfway done so um, the desired Broodlord tech is far from being ready. And it seems as if Piscalita will now just move towards the third base, will probably easily take it out. I wish she'd just take a fourth base of her own, just uh, as a precautious measure, if in case uh, this, this push somehow gets stopped eventually. Okay, Rage Spire almost done. She already produced a few Corruptors. Seems as if Sunokazui just wants to cross fingers and hope that her opponent will leave her enough time in order to just at least get a few Wooglots out. Don't really know if Wooglots will actually be the saving grace, but it might fire some time. I uh, don't really know if she can win the game anymore. She GG's out and Piscadita ties it up one to one. Welcome to Daybreak. It's one to one. And it seems as if Sumo just wants to go for a very early scout, or what is more probable, a proxy hatch. So some proxy cheese out of Suno, or may maybe some sort of hidden base? No, probably not. I think this must or maybe 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 it is. This is really odd. Where does she want to go with that probe? Or with that drone? I was expecting some sort of um, some sort of proxy cheese. Well, maybe she does. Okay, maybe she just wants to avoid any kind of early scout. So that's why she just takes this unusual route here. Yeah, that probably must be it. So she will just come in from the right-hand side, evading that little probe. So that really tells us that Suno has done this kind of cheese a lot of times, actually. Knowing exactly when a Protoss player will usually move out the first probe. And that it would eventually just scout or possibly scout the drone moving up, thus getting alarmed too early on. But of course, still the early scout, or actually, well, it's it's actually kind of the normal scout after the gateway, just pays off for Piscalita. She just realizes that there is no base uh, there where one should be. She just sees the extractor and the spawning pool. If she just has her timings down, she should know that something is up. Otherwise, she might expect her opponent to just go for a usual uh, hatch, a usual pool first build. Uh, because now even sooner just doing the right thing, just trying to mind game her opponent even more by just trying to get that base down. So the Piscalita must think that her opponent would just go for a normal early pool into hatchery build. Now even denying this will probably even feel good about denying this base over here. But it returns for a little bit, wants to see if the base actually goes down. So nicely done there by her and now she might assume that something is up. The question, of course, right now is, will she answer correctly? And has she seen all of these drones moving out? I mean, by now she must know that her opponent is doing some sort of cheese. Not really scouting for it actively. Still has only one zealot out and has uh, the Nexus planted down. So the Overlord is here, will grant her high ground vision. Of course, that one little pylon down here might be a little bit annoying for Suno. Because with a Photon Overcharge, uh, her um, Overlord might get taken out and her Overlord is kinda important in order to grant her vision. But yeah, that's actually like the worst case scenario, just planting down gateways here. Just yeah, easily, uh, eventually just um, 
cancels it because she already knows, okay, I cannot really hold this one. So Mothership Core is out, might now be able to just get these Zerglings here, but so is the Queen, and the Queen is unfortunately out of range of that pattern over here. Piscolita just realizes what's up now and cancels the Naxos as well. In the meantime, we've seen Suno Kazuya do this time and time again. She's very well versed doing these kind of cheeses, especially the Proxy Hacks bat build. She's also used it against other FSL players throughout this season and the last one. So, yeah, she has a lot of routine doing these kinds of pushes, so um, I don't know if Piscolita actually has that much routine as well. We've seen a lot of Protoss players and even Terran players fall to this kind of cheese. So, Suno will now be able to take out the uh, first low ground pylon. There's one more pylon up on the high ground. Unfortunately, uh, again, this is not a full wall off yet, so the spine quarters will just get closer and closer while the queen. Uh, drops more and more creep in order to make it possible for the fine crawlers to just advance. Suna just sends up the first few links, try to take out that zealot over here, but won't be able to get through due to most of the force fields, uh, force fields blocking there. So now another photon overcharge goes down. The mothership core does not really have that much more energy left. Another pylon over here might help out later on once photon overcharge gets available once more, but unfortunately, photon overcharge does not reach as far as the Nexus Cannon did. Uh, in earlier versions of the game. So now, unfortunately, yeah, basically they're not paying attention to that small wall here. The links get in, and that should maybe even seal the deal right now. The spine crawlers dealing more and more damage from behind, while the links just take out all the units inside the base, getting all of the valuable units. I mean, Pescalita just reacted quite nicely here with getting more warp gates out, getting a lot of units out, but then, of course, the link run by just did very, very... Uh, did a lot of damage here, even that gateway sitting too far in front and can get attacked by that spine crawler here. Should have better just put it a little bit more on the back foot here in order to keep it from getting attacked by the spore about the spines. So spine crawler is now just taking out the wall bit by bit while Suno is just massing more and more links. Uh, the only unit she actually needs to just rush through and kill off everything. This, yeah, she probably just wants to have the immortal in order to help her taking out the spine call is a little bit more effectively but yeah this immortal itself just won't really help at all against the links links now taking out the last remaining stalker finally the spine crawlers have enough surface area in order to get up into the main base will reroute and yeah one zealot alone or a few zealots well finally the immortal pops out but it gets immediately attacked so let's see if the Immortal can actually dish out enough damage in order to take out that Spine Crawler at least. That would at least make one Spine Crawler less and maybe even a second one, because this one was already pretty, um, pretty damaged. So getting a second one, but Piscolita finally realizes the wall is open, there's nothing I can do, and Suna takes the lead with a 2 to 1. But now we're in Overgrowth. Well, leading 2 to 1 is this woman over here playing for Hugakati team Sunokazri and to the bottom left in red Protoss for she's got the lane it's Piscalida obviously again just wants to go for an early expand trying to wall off as fast as possible at the bottom of the ramp at the entrance to her natural base, while we have another cheese incoming for Suno, it seems. She uh, has gone into gas and pool very early on. Will now. Um, it seems as if she now wants to scout or either just wants to sneak by another drone there. Ah, just unfortunately a little bit too late. Don't really know if Piscalita actually saw what was going on. Ah, maybe going for the gold cheese. Okay, she does, yeah. There's the gold cheese. So, actually doing the same thing she did on the first map of the evening. Uh, where she also took the gold base and then just produced mass links, tried to just get through the um, wall of her opponent. And actually this time around it could work out even better, since there's no ramp that makes it a bit more difficult to actually reach these buildings here, and just also creates some natural choke points. But this time around it's only the buildings that create the choke point. And uh, there's actually a lot of... The, the way that um, Piscadita is building this wall, she actually also, again, grants a lot of surface area 
towards these buildings, so Lynx can just attack from a lot of angles here, dealing more damage. So Pescalita now has seen the gold cheese and knows what's up. Yeah, it's probably just expected something like that, but of course she also wanted to know whether her opponent was going for even more than uh, just a gold cheese, maybe even another hatchery that was going down, but it wasn't. So there's still one open gap here, but the Zealot is just there, but it's not a whole position. Whoa, that was just very close here. But sooner just Micro and her links trying to make the best out of it, trying to maybe take out the Zealot, but unfortunately the Zealot prevails. So now Pescalita will just be able to hold this wall with one Zealot for now. Zealot also regenerating shields, but of course Suno is just producing more and more links and also baning us. So this time, if need be, Suno could actually also try to just baning bust towards this. And actually this pylon here looks pretty vulnerable since it's like the wide open pylon. If she just crushes into here, she will also kill the Zealot as well. And then we have a wide open gap that she just can't easily seal off because that pylon just does not give her enough um, energy uh, or the, the range of this energy field is just not far enough out here in order to just place down another building. She would need another pylon here. And uh, walling off with one pylon is impossible, so if she really breaks through this with Banelings, this will be a wide open gap that uh, Sunu can actually just yeah, make use of. And uh, now she's just inside the base trying to kill off as many units as possible. The uh, wall off was actually not really closed. It's not a con complete uh, wall off over here. So Lynx now making their way into the main base and this is like the most annoying scenario for a Protoss whatsoever. I mean now at the time she just has to first of all just have a look at her main base. Ooh actually just nice little micro there. Did she lose one probe? Wow! Magnificent defense there by her. I mean of course it was a mistake to let the um, units in in the first place but then she just managed to uh, do the best out of it. And Sunokos were even being <laughs> <laughs> Even being greedy as hell, just taking the other gold base as well. So she really wants to stay on. Uh, uh, she really wants to stay on low tech, I feel, and just produce more and more links. Maybe just keep her opponent afraid. And uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it seems as if she wants to transition into something eventually i mean she got no didn't she oh no it was just the hatchery building so yeah i was just thinking i would have seen a lair in the production tab but it was just the other hatchery so never mind but yeah she just stays on 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 uh hive uh, on um, sorry on hatchery tech for now but she will be able to produce a lot of links out of it uh once she just saturates uh once she just saturates this base over here as well uh she will also have these links closer by so a lot of links will just um reach the entrance of uh, the entrance towards the natural bias very very early on or very soon we could you could rather say so what does she want to do now i mean i think piscadita does not know about the third gold base how would she she just now moves in with the observer probably just wants to move in a little bit further i feel and see whether there's a third base being taken over here and of course if there's some tech she eventually wants to transition in so now we have just uh, the hatchery going into there seems as if suno finally wants to transition into her muta play once more the gold base won't really help her that much in order to get it i mean the limiting factor for mutas is mostly gas so that's actually the most important thing she wants to have again nice force field blocks here by Piscalita, so she's really playing protoss old school style with a lot of sentries and a lot of force fields of course that itself, I mean, it, it helps her to protect herself against these rushes that Sunu keeps throwing at her. But of course, the push itself is just way weaker than unusual timing. Because due to uh, all of this gas being spent into sentries, you just have a lot less units, especially gas-heavy units. Your tech is usually laid by quite a bit. So all in all, usually these pushes come out a little bit weaker. Um, they can still do some sort of damage. Like I said, I mean, if you really get these units together quite well and quite clumped up and you have enough energy on the force field, uh, enough energies to, uh, to throw force field, then it might help. But this time around, I mean, the recall came pretty late. All of the units, almost all of the units died. I mean, the sentry seems to have at least survived. But uh, yeah, no third base up while Sumo actually has two gold bases running. And uh, Piscalita should just have realized that she just can't move out on the map because she always is in danger of running into this big 
big zirpling force that can just easily surround her and now of course she's just lost all everything i mean she's just lost map vision she's lost map control there's just almost nothing she can do the only thing she can do and that is what she does is just using the warp prism for harassment and again like i said just loading in a lot of stalkers <coughs> and i don't know i mean stalkers they they don't really deal that much damage the only unit that that piscalina has seen so far are lings in masses and mass lings are superb against stalkers so why would you warp in stalkers for harassment i mean that's such a heavy investment it's 125 gas to uh, 125 minerals to 50 gas so it's 400 gas plus 500 minerals and they will be probably just down the gutter i mean if she loses them if she just uh, realizes what's up and then just retreats with them and uses them later fine but uh, she might even use them uh, well against the mutas that are already incoming but uh, yeah if she just loses the warp prism with all the stalkers inside or just puts the warp uh, put, puts the stalkers down maybe killing one or two things one or two drones or maybe even three or four but then just loses all of these stalkers that's totally not worth the investment okay basically it just moves in let's see how much damage she can actually deal soon is already retreating with all of her links links of speed should be at home pretty uh, pretty soon so stalker is actually getting some damage dealt three workers four workers plus a queen now just get loaded in to the war prism but some mutas are already out so now it seems like i said as if piscalita is not going to lose only the stalkers but also the warp prism as well might just barely be able to unload and maybe kill off no the warp prism just gets taken out before that and that's just what did i say 700 minerals and 200 gas down the gutter for five ropes or five drones and a queen not really worth the investment and but in the meantime that's at least the one good thing that piscalita got out of it she just had uh, her opponent tucked back a little bit uh, in order to take her own third nexus so Sudo still having the gold base over here even spreading some creep no it's just the natural creep uh, i was just wondering because spreading creep here would not be a good idea maybe backwards in order to connect your bases because they are almost already connected here which is really quite nice and uh, well now they're both on three bases Sudo because we just has the advantage of the gold base uh, minerals but of course uh, this base is almost already dry so i feel Sudo should already take a fourth which he did so now the time might have come for Piscalita to move out. This time around she doesn't have any Arkans or Storm in the mix. Which I think is the biggest problem with her army right now. I mean she has some counter against uh, a medium amount of Mutas with the Bling Stalkers. But on the ground uh, any, she really does not have anything that deals well with um, the links or even bane links. So yeah, this will just be the same thing. The links will just surround everything. And while the stalkers and all the other units are now busy shooting links like crazy because there are so many of them, the mutas will just tear down everything with Suno almost not losing any valuable unit. Yeah. I mean, the links she can just easily replace and now Piscalita's um, army is just down to shreds not really worth mentioning no way she will be able to hold this third base here if Suno doesn't want her to have it as soon as she moves out with units the links will just surround everything and Suno can just come in and crush it but she doesn't even have to I mean she can always just tuck back uh, take a fifth base saturate her fourth going up into higher attack her opponent just can't really do jack shit at that point in time so finally we have the templar archives up and piscalita tries to get into storm maybe even getting some archons up archons like the perfect counter unit against this kind of uh, um, against this kind of composition of course only in a direct engagement but yeah piscalita realizes this is it sooner takes the third game and wins the series by doing so